So does this market rally have more room to run from here? CNBC contributor Michael Farr says yes, but Peter Schiff of Europe Pacific Capital has his doubts about what he sees in a Fed-driven market. Good to see you both. Thanks for joining us. Peter, let me kick this up with you. What's your problem with this market? Well, the problem is why it's rising. It's not because the fundamentals are improving. It's because of the Fed. We have cheap money, and so stock prices are going up. But food prices go up, uh, gasoline prices go up, and, and the macroeconomic imbalances underlying our economy continue to get worse. If the Fed did the right thing and took away the punch roll, yeah, yeah the stock market would go down. But instead, we're going to have a crash in the dollar first, then probably the bond market second, and then eventually the stocks will roll over too. Yeah, but can you really say that? I mean, don't you think today's move, I'm just saying today's move, don't you think that's because of the jobs numbers that we got today? Well, the job numbers weren't as bad as people were expecting. I wouldn't say right. it was a good report. In fact, if you look beneath the surface, it gets even worse. We didn't create any manufacturing jobs. We created a bunch of low-paying service sector jobs. A lot of them are part-time. Hours work went down. I think what's happening is you have restaurants that are reducing the hours worked to get people under 30 hours to get out from under Obamacare. And so now they have to hire somebody part-time to fill up the slack. Those are the kind of jobs we're getting. Look at the U6 on employment, which doesn't count those people uh, as being employed, it notched up to 13.9 percent. What do you think about that, Michael Farr? You're on the other side of that trade, I aren't you? Peter's well, yes and no. I mean, I don't think Peter's wrong here, Maria, but, I mean, the market's moving higher. We've got a Fed that's got its foot to the floor here. We've got lots and lots of cash coming in. We've got Maria wearing her green jacket on the floor of the exchange when the market's making new highs. I mean, come on, how can you bet against that market? Relative to bonds, stocks continue to be attractive. I'm always cautious as I manage other people's money, but... This trend is going higher, and I don't think we're anywhere near some sort of frothy blow-off stage yet. So yeah. while stock selection gets to be very important, I think this thing has room certainly to go. It could pull back in the short term, but we'll see higher levels. Yeah, well, we've got the buy-on-the-dip mentality very much in place, Michael. So even if we were to pull back, that's, that's uh, got buyers uh, at the ready here. But let me ask you a question about the Federal Reserve, because at the end of the day, it really is about the Fed. When do you think that the Fed is going to start winding it down? You know, I, I, I listened to Steve Leisman earlier on, on your show, and I thought he made a very good point. They're sort of adjusting out a couple of months sometime in 2014 as to when they may pull back. The Fed's been keeping our campfire of this economy alive by pouring kerosene on it. Will it have a life of its own and continue to burn without that kerosene? That's the real question. Yeah. But, you know, what I can yeah, say not, to It's Peter not a question is, in my mind. You, know, you don't want to Peter. listen to Steve Leisman. But, you know, the, 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 the Ben Bernanke no, is going to keep printing until the dollar crashes. Right? There is no exit strategy. But, the Fed is bluffing. We have a completely phony economy that is driven 100% by cheap money. The minute you take it away, but they, the whole thing implodes. But Ben Bernanke can't admit that need. because then, you know, the cat's out of the bag. Mm. So the QE is going to be here well, until we have a crisis in the while. dollar and the Fed can't get away with it anymore. They could hold it for a while, Peter. They don't have to absolutely excess out of that, uh, exit out of that huge portfolio. But won't you admit sort of that they the general exit. trend in the economic data is improving? It's not. It's only, it only looks like it's improving because of the cheap money. And they cannot exit. Exit is impossible. Okay. The, they are the, the bond market. Improving. They're the buyers. They can't sell. The data what? are improving yeah. because of the cheap money and because of what the, what the Fed's doing. We hope that we will hit some sort of escape velocity and the economy no. can take on a momentum of its own. No, when the, the cheap Fed money is back. making That's it worse. We're it's taking a sick economy and making it sicker. It only yeah, feels no, but, good. Just like if you're Peter, a drug addict and you take more drugs, you feel better, but maybe, you're not Peter. getting healthier. The yeah, cheap money maybe. is preventing the economy from I've getting healthier. I've always wanted to figure out that drug addict thing. I've never gotten to that one yet. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this, Peter, because, I mean, you... You make a lot of good points, but at the end of the day, this is reality. This is where we are. The Federal Reserve is on QE infinity, and that's the bottom line. Just yesterday, they said, look, we could even increase it from here. So this is the reality that we face. Whether or not this is a manufactured market or not, basically suggesting what you just said, uh, you've got no alternatives to stock. So why am I going to get in front of this? Oh, yes, you do. Where's my alternative? I mean, look, you know, copper was up 6.5% today. So look at the big copper's... move up in oil. Copper. But you can invest in foreign stocks. The dollar was actually softer today. But I know what the reality is. The reality is we're living in a bubble.